Come on, Peter. Yes, you're soon. Hi, folks. I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Today, we're talking about the new horror film, Hereditary. Welcome to Film Club. So you saw this film when it premiered at Sundance. Yes. I saw it months later when it was shown to the press yep. for its release in theaters. And obviously, it's built up a lot of hype in the months since Partially it because appeared. of me. I mean, I feel like I'm partially responsible for building up the hype <laughs> of this thing. It's always a danger with a horror film is that when you say something is very scary, I think you're always sort of setting people up for disappointment. But I, to be honest, this thing scared the hell out of me at Sundance. But thankfully, I think we have a tonic for my, for my overhyping, which is that you were not scared by this film. I didn't find it that unsettling or that unnerving. I think it has been overhyped as a horror film and somewhat underhyped as a black comedy. <laughs> I We've had this discussion. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff that I find instantly revolting or unnerving in a movie. I do think that what we find scary in film says a lot about ourselves. Sure. And there's a certain danger of turning this discussion into basically one long therapy session for the two of us. <laughs> but I will say that horror that is located within a family, which, mm -hmm. which you have here, doesn't tend to really get to me. I'm curious what, what you think sort of general audiences are going to make of this film. I think it has this sort of surreal sensibility to the early scenes. Mm -hmm that is not something that you really see in a lot of mainstream horror films, which yeah. is that so many of them start as domestic dramas. Mm -hmm. We've sort of come to accept this convention that what you start with is a very boring, strictly conventional domestic drama that then turns into mm -hmm. something interesting, whereas this film they're woven together. Yeah, and the, the film is almost stranger as a domestic drama than it is as a horror film because it is a somewhat conventional horror film that's very well made, that's woven together with a film that, I mean, for the first 10 minutes, feels like late period Alain Rene. I mean, you're, <laughs> you have this literal dollhouse set because you, you yeah. start with basically moving into the model of the house and then that turns into the actual bedroom. Mm -hmm. The interior is very claustrophobic. You know, he's having a little bit of fun with cutting and longer takes and all of these things. So it is in some ways odder as the less supernatural side of it is in many ways more eccentric than than the horror part of it. Well, and, and grueling too, in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. I mean- See, I didn't find it grueling. I was more s struck by, I guess, by its comic timing in those scenes. I, yeah. I do think that there is a fundamental sense of irony about the premise um, that the film has, and that is why it's kind of able to crack jokes about but it. But it's dealing with some very yeah. heavy stuff, you know? And, I, and I, again, I think that's one of the reasons it works so well is, and a lot of it is Colette, who I think is excellent, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. and a really complicated performance, and her kind of dealing with all these conflicting feelings she's having, not just grief, but resentment. And I think that there are moments, there's a dinner table conversation that, to me, was as harrowing as any of the horror scenes. You know, I, I'll, I'll admit that something like It Follows, mm -hmm or the Kyoshi Kurosawa film Cure, mm -hmm. um, freaks me out a bit more. Okay. I think I'm maybe a little bit more freaked out by public spaces or strangers, you know? And something maybe a little more abstract yes. as well, you know? Speaking of abstract, I think yep. this is kind of a film where it's best not to spoil uh, the plot or yeah. to, to give a minimum of information. But you basically have a family that is grieving. Yes. You have a central character played by Tony Collette, who is an artist who is preparing for a big show, a big gallery show, well, actually a tiny gallery show because her artworks are miniatures of mostly what we presume are events in her life. Yes, which I think is also a, a pretty apt metaphor for the, the filmmaking process yeah. and, and grappling with, with grief and, and the problems in your life through art. But her mother has just died, um, a mother who was kind of this sort of distant, secretive uh, person and, and a kind of cold presence in her life. Mm -hmm. And it's, I feel like it's kind of uh, strained the relationship between her and her family. She has a teenage son, played by Alex Wolf, uh, her husband, uh, played by Gabriel Byrne, uh, and she has a 13-year-old daughter who uh, seems sort of vaguely disturbed, uh, played by a, a Broadway star uh, named uh, Millie Shapiro. Well, we probably shouldn't say much more than that, right. except that the film has, you know, deals to some extent with grief and death, and that maybe it's a more conventional horror movie than it lets on, mm -hmm. but I think there's some very well constructed from a purely technical standpoint, horror in this film. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you've seen before, but you rarely see done with this degree of craft. Craftsmanship, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and sure. intelligence, and 
in a funny way, realism. I think mm -hmm. part of what makes this film work comically, because I think it is pretty funny in mm -hmm. spots, is the fact that it treats the characters' reactions, or at least Tony Collette's characters' reactions, pretty realistically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the reasons this thing really worked for me is that it does work on the basic level of a sort of uh, a sort of full bore set piece machine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the film sort of starts slowly. It's uh, this sort of dread infused like slow burn, but then once it picks up speed, it's I think it's kind of relentless in what it's throwing at you. But on top of that, I think it's also a pretty serious and pretty thoughtful domestic drama, specifically about sort of uh, unaddressed resentments and the way that uh, trauma and things that have happened in your life when you were younger can sort of infect your family. And I think that it, it addresses that stuff in a way that's, in the way that a, a serious drama would. and. I think the way that the horror works is actually kind of sophisticated. I think that, that the film primes your emotions with this really heavy drama stuff, and then, and then the horror plays on that. She was a very difficult woman, which maybe explains me. I recognize you from your mother. What? Sometimes I swear I can feel her in the room. 